found God with the flow. Bring the police to the studio and bring the bomb squad to the show. Ain't a nigga touching minds. When you listen to my shit, you don't chew, you don't breathe, you'll miss a fucking line. Every time I spit, I take the shit. Living in the deck, you long up off your bomb. Yeah. 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 Okay, so let's begin. Uh, first of all, it's an honor to meet you once again. Thank you, and, uh, to meet you too. Thank you very much for coming. Appreciate welcome it. to Poland. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. And, yes. and uh, let's say welcome to today, the anniversary, let's say anniversary, in quotation marks, uh, half a year after the release of uh, your album, Prime. So at first I wanted to ask, um, after this short period of time, uh, this half a year, uh, how do you feel about this album? Uh, if you're looking back at it, uh, is it a masterpiece in your eyes? Would you change anything? Is it, uh, how, is it, how do you feel about this album? Yeah, no, we're, we're very happy with, with it. I mean, we just did a six-week tour, you know, um, with uh, Boldy James and uh, Yo Droog. So, very successful tour. Almost every show was sold out. Uh, good crowd. Got me back into just the performing, you know, as a group. Because I'm used to DJing by myself and doing gigs. So to do a group tour, I haven't done that since 2004. You know, so to do it with Royce, we already have a good relationship as friends. So it was easy to do. You know, getting back out on the road and just adjusting to the road life, which. It's never easy, but the fun part is always performing. Yeah, how do you feel about the place? Yeah, I, I feel great about it. I mean, it definitely exceeded all of our expectations as, as far as reception and just what we were looking looking to do in terms of hitting our target with, with, with the kind of album that we wanted to do. Now, um, in terms of just you know how it how it came out musically, there's some things that could you know that we can improve upon. You know, I think. I don't think that there's a such thing as a perfect project. You know, I think as artists, we just try to come, just do the best we can and come to as close, as close to that as possible. We definitely, I definitely hear some things that we're gonna improve upon, you know, when we get in, like with the deluxe. We're doing a deluxe version with four or five more songs. Um, we're looking for those to be a step up from where the album is now. And um, if we get back in and do another one, you know, we plan on topping it. You know, so that's that's basically what it's about. Just continuing to elevate and keep pushing ourselves creative. Yeah, and uh, talking about this this uh, prime tour, this sequel, uh, if it's uh, if it comes to uh, if it's going to be realized, uh, would it be uh, based on the same concept as uh, as prime, as in sampling from just one artist catalog? <clears throat> well, yeah, we we discussed that like either. You know, get take more from Adrian Young, you know, because he gave me some new yes. folders of new music that he's working on, or maybe pick another artist and just do the same thing. Just do, you know, just one artist and do all beats from that one artist. So it's up in the air, but it's a possibility. Yes. And so, if I'm not mistaken, uh, was Prime one of the last projects uh, made, created in the legendary DD studios? That's uh, yeah. Sadly, no, it's no more from yeah. uh, uh, January. It's the last album done there. Yeah. Um, so exactly that last album. Um, yeah, that uh, that uh, NYG's and uh, MC8 mm -hmm. from my company was one of the albums were also finished there too. They haven't come out yet, but the prime as far as what got released is the last album that's been already released at D&D. &D. Mm -hmm. 
you share some stories? What, what was it like to, you know, to create music in, in such legendary um, place as the Indie Studios? Was? It was a dream come true for me. You know, um, I, I always tell this, I always say, um, just coming up before I got into the music business, all my, um, all my singles that I used to buy, my cassettes that I used to buy, a lot of the artists, you know, they say recorded at D&D Studios, so I used to think that if you record there, you made it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, I used to, I just thought to myself, like, one day we're going to get to record at D&D Studios and put effects on our voices, you know, like, like they get to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, my first memory of going there was uh, going to do the 50 MCs verse for Tony Touch with Eminem. You know, and um, I just remember we just had a session there and it was just so much going on. It was a few rooms going all at the same time. Tony Touch had his own room and their cream wasn't there. But it was like MOP, MOP was in there, Jail Felony was in there, and it was like this huge session. Nothing that I had ever seen before. And just being a kid coming from Detroit and witnessing that and being able to create that environment meant everything to me. You know, and um, actually being able to um, close the gaps um, cross the T's, dot the I's, and actually work with Preem, you know, um, for my very first project that I ever did. That was a dream come true. And then be able to take that and turn it into a relationship, a working relationship with Preem, as well as a friendship. And then and then now today, doing the entire project with him and then being able to tour with him, um, getting insight from him, hearing all kinds of stories from when he was coming up, and just feeling like that I'm building my own legacy now under the tutelage of somebody who's already a, a staple in hip hop is just, you know, it's, it's something to be proud of. You know what I mean? So, it's cool. How did you feel about owning this, uh, this play magical place for hip hop? Yeah, I mean, um, it, it's, uh, you know, it's a major part of hip hop history. Um, and I always credit Showbiz and Lord Finesse because they're the ones that brought me there to do a session for Lord Finesse and it was for a remix for Return of the Funky Man. And I came to do the scratches. Showbiz had to leave and said, hey, uh, can you get the mix done and send, bring it and give it to me later on cassette? You know, and I said, yeah, no problem. And I took the, the final copy, listened to it in my, in my truck, and I was like, wow, this sounds amazing. And that's how I met Eddie Sancho, who was the engineer there. And the next thing I said, man, if everything sounds good like this, I'm going to start doing the next Gangster album at D&D. And we started Daily Operation was the first album that we did there in 92. And I stayed ever since, never left, never went to another studio. So um, we, we have a documentary film that we're about to, that's, that we're filming right now uh, about the whole history of D&D. Um, before they closed, we, we filmed you know, with, with the original owners, David Doug, uh, Nas is in it, uh, Jay-Z is in it. Uh, uh, a lot, almost everybody you can think of that's been in D&D is in, is in the I film. And then I'm doing an album along with it. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're halfway done. So the, you'll be on the lookout for that. But we're, we're putting out a film about the history of D&D. Even when they started tearing it down, we got all the footage everything so and it was like a big reunion and all the engineers all the the, the, the uh, managers I hadn't seen in almost 15 years they were all there so it's gonna be a good be a good, good documentary yeah yeah and it's also kind of a sub topic but uh, speaking of gangstar uh, we passed in april the fifth anniversary of, of uh, guru's passing right. uh, if it's not a problem uh, can you share some of the How do you remember? I mean, we, well, our memories are just really extensive because Gangstar went through three different generations before I joined the group. You know, but it, it used to be Big Shug, Guru, and Shug's brother, Swab D. And they were the original Gangstar. And they started it in Atlanta in college. So, uh, you know, Shug was down there just hanging, and uh, Guru was going to college, and that's when they put Gangstar together while they were there, even though they're from Boston. And then Shug's brother moved on, and then uh, then Damo uh, became the second MC. So it was two, two MC. It went from one MC to two, and uh, it was Damo Deesky and Guru. So they would they would round together like a Run DMC type, and they had another DJ named Mike D. And so from there, that was the second gangstar. Then I joined 
third generation of gang started, and now it's just me and Guru and Shug. But Shug was in, college, was in jail at the time, so when he came home, came out, he rejoined us. And around that time, we were just putting out the Gang Star Foundation with Jay Rue, the Amateur, and Group Home. So, I mean, it was just a, 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 you know another family thing that extended from me and Guru just making records to carry on the Gang Star name and. And, uh, you know, the memories are crazy from touring to living together for, for nine years to, you know, to, to seeing the entire world. And, and we, we have Gangstar Enterprises now with me, his son, and his, his, his whole family. So we, we sell all Gangstar merchandise and we're going to be putting out other music and stuff later on that, that we share together. So everything's good. The, the legacy lives on. Okay, on the uh, right side, how do you, how do you, how do you remember him? Uh, well, I, don't, I only have a few, a few memories of him. You know, Guru was somebody who obviously I always respected. Um, I'm a lot younger than these guys, so like when I came around, uh, when I first got into the business, I used to see Guru out and about, like every now and then, like at parties and stuff like that. And we used to drink with each other. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, see each other, show each other respect, you know what I mean? Like, I always looked up to him, but I never, I didn't have to, I didn't get the pleasure of being able to really get to know him, you know what I mean? Um, me and Prem didn't get real tight until kind of like later on, you know, so I've just seen him in passion here and there, so it's kind of like just a, you know, I see him and that's, that's Guru, you know what I mean? Like, just, I always, my interactions with him was more so like a fan than, than a friend, you know what I mean? So. Right, so yeah, we talked a lot about history, so uh, let's concentrate so now on the future. Uh, Royce, can you tell us uh, about you know, the status of the next Slaughterhouse album, your, your upcoming projects? Uh, yeah, well, we, um, we actually, we're pretty much done recording the Slaughterhouse album. Now we're in, in mixing mode, so we're looking to get that mix over the course. I'm actually, when I get home Monday, I'm actually home until July. Yeah, so. And that's gonna be a first for me being home that long. So I'll have time to focus on the Slaughterhouse album, focus on my album as well. Um, hopefully, we can get the Slaughterhouse album um, out late summer, early fall. Um, my project I'm working on right now, I'm about 60, 70 percent of the way done. Um, I'm focusing on the Prime bonus songs um, and possibly another Prime album. You know, um, me and Prime gonna sit down when we get home, go over each other's schedule, and just figure out when's the best time to attack. You know, so the goal for me is to have, is to put three projects out within the course of a year, starting with the Prime album, which came in December. So I got between now and December to put my album out, Slaughterhouse album, and then focus on the next Prime. And enough time to be back, back on the festival stages next summer. Uh, Primo, can you tell us uh, something about uh, recently announced uh, your album Last Session at... Uh, 320, yeah. Well, that's part of the D&D yes, documentary, like yeah, so, um, we're, like I said, we're halfway done. Um, I'm, I'm just recording all the songs, gathering them up, and then uh, we'll, you know, either put it out early, early fall, or at the top of next year, you know, so that they coincide with the, with the film. So, it'll be good. <laughs> So, uh, no info about the features you're not going to reveal anything. Uh, there's going to be a lot of good ones, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. Um, and so can you tell us about this deluxe version of, of Prime? Like, who are, who are we going to... Uh, who can we expect? Uh, we know about MF Dooms and uh, Black Fox. And who else uh, we can hear on, on the deluxe version of Prime? We got a couple more people. Uh, so we got a couple a more people here. We, we, there's still a few things up in the air. We did some reaching out, you know. Um, getting people to guest appear on songs, it's, it's, it's easy to get people to commit because, you know, in this business, we all respect each other, but the reality of it is, it's a time thing. You know, like, people get busy, we're busy. It's about catching people at the right time, stars being in line, so hopefully, Everybody that we reached out to will come through and we'll catch them at a time where, you know, we catch them on an off day or something like that where they got time to spit a 16 and relay something. So we just, it, we kind of basing it off that right now. Um, we pretty much got everything in the can. Um, as soon as we get this done, Prima had time to go home and start focusing on the mixes. 
and um, we'll get back together and do whatever tightening that we need to do. And you guys will be hearing something within the next month or so. Okay. And uh, in some interviews, you, Primo, you mentioned that uh, you want to go in depth uh, producing um, music for films. Uh, like you want to you want to reach uh, quotation marks yeah. reach Danny Elfman level. Mm -hmm. So uh, what are the you know, the upcoming projects? Um, there's a the VH1 uh, is doing putting out a film called The Breaks. It's based in the '90s era of New York, and uh, um, it's about you know three three uh, three characters who are going through different situations, but all of them are into rap and hip hop music, but. Uh, have different lines of work that they do in their, in their daily lives. And uh, the, the one thing is, the writer of, of, the, uh, of it was two writers. Um, one of his name is Seath Mann. He wrote a lot of The uh, uh, the Wire. You heard of The Wire? Yes, yes. Yeah, he wrote a lot of episodes for that. He, uh, he also wrote for, um, uh, what's, the, what's the show with the zombies and stuff? Uh, Walking the, Dead. Yeah, Walking Dead. And um, you know, so me and he wrote, me and he wrote five episodes of The Wire. He's very versed in in, in dealing with the streets. So uh, he did, and then the guy that actually the, the the film is based off of his name is Dan Charnas. He used to work for Profile Records back in the '80s. He was Run DMC. You know, the, the, and uh, even when when uh, DJ Quick came, just came to the label. So he's been around all the eras of Profiles history, special ed, and all of that stuff. And he just wrote a book called The Big Payback, which is all about the life of hip hop in the, and, and, and handling business in the, in the hip hop industry. So it's a really good book, and it's, and it's all based off of that. So when that comes out, um, Dan, Dan is from the era of the 80s, so he understands the music. Even the, the period that we're gonna start from the 80s and go into the 90s, his list of music is the stuff that that other people don't really put in their films. So it's gonna be a, uh, um, and actually the people that did the TLC movie, did you see the TLC story? Wow. Yeah, the, the crazy, sexy, cool. They also produced that. <clears throat> yeah, you know, they, they, they produced that as well, which was really good. And um, they uh, <clears throat> are, they wanted me to do the music for the scoring and also do the music for the artists that are going to perform their roles as, as MCs in it. So uh, it's, it's coming out real well. So it's going to really be authentic and it'll, it'll cover the, 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 the generations the right way instead of all the, the proper music will be is already picked. So, yeah, it's called The Breaks. So uh, I wish you all the success. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And have a great time. <coughs> I don't know why y'all so highly regarded. You rhyme like you born a lot. Why we retarded? I'll show you what my fuck is started. I rhyme on the god level. The god is honest. I follow artists who target their audience. But not me. I target the artists. Follow the target. All of this rap pointing at that sentence. And that's when I tell them like, call me the shack. You lazy and I'm tired of your target. You let the feet to the dance charts. I'm going ham in the slaughter. House. Fuck you and your damn shot. Ain't your crowd participation. I'm putting the landmine under your stage. Had his place right in fair parts. And call that shit crap. Precipitation. I'm more creamy than my own DJ and pop I came out of my mama room with a box cutter. Lyrical split in them and said, Mirror's the purpose slip. None of these niggas can work with me. I work, work with them. Come on. Hands up. Hands up. You don't really want that. Tell the priest. Hands up. But keep playing on. Oh, fucking stop fighting. I'm the same priest. What's up? On the vocals, we have Detroit Sound Dweller. Provide the instrument. We have the incomparable Adrian Young. And on the wheels of steel. Take from me. Rock, rock, rock on, rock, rock, rock on, brother Malcolm. I'm gonna tell you the truth, whether you like it or not. 